Three things you didn't know you can do with FormAssembly. So you already know that FormAssembly allows you to create user-friendly streamlined web forms, but I think there's a lot more that you don't know about our platform. So this video covers three uncommon FormAssembly features that you can try. The first one be JavaScript for email verification. This is where you can use JavaScript to allow your users to confirm their email address by entering it twice. So to begin, you'd need a text field and we just call it email address. This field needs to be a variable and we can do that when we click on options. Under field properties, let's go to calculations and make sure that we toggle the slider on. So this is a variable, it's turned on. And the name for this field would be email. Next would be a second email address field. And we also need to make this a variable. So again, under calculations, this slider is turned on and the variable name for this field would be confirm email. Once you have those, these two variables set up, Let's add in a third text field, and this field will hold the error message that will be displayed if the email addresses do not match. Additionally, this field would be a hidden field, so it's not displayed in the form. So to add the default value, we hit options, and under field properties, let's go to default value, and you can type whatever error message that you want to display, but right now we just have it as email addresses do not match. Additionally, we are also making this field a variable and we are calling it error. And then lastly, to make this a hidden field, let's click on access control and select the hidden radio button. Once that's done, the last piece that we would need, and I think the most important one, would be another text field that would be our calculated field. So to mark this as a calculated field, we hit options and then go to calculations and toggle the slider. So this is a calculated field that's turned on and we have our formula in here that consists of all our variable names. And this formula reads as, if the email field, the email address entered in the email field equals the email address in the confirm email field, then our calculated field would just be blank. It won't display anything, but if the email addresses do not match, then we want it to display our error message that we've added as a default value in this um, hidden error message field. So let's see that in action. So I will type in my email address. And when I go to this field, since this field is technically blank at the moment, we will see that error message pop up. And if I type in an email that doesn't match the first one, the error message doesn't go away. And if I try to submit, it says that there's one problem with my submission and the custom error that we saw earlier via the regular expression would pop up. And I would need to correct this to make the errors go away. And then from there, I'd be able to submit the form. So the second feature that we will be talking about is conditional email notifications. This is where we can conditionally trigger notifications to get sent to different people in the company based on a response in the form. So here I have a drop down menu with three options. So the options are volunteer, participant, and parent or guardian. So if I select that I am a volunteer, the email notification will get sent to a person specifically handling um, volunteers. And if I select that I am a participant, then it would be sent to a different person in the company. So how we do that is we make this field a variable and we hit options and scroll to calculations, make sure this is a variable is turned on and we assign a variable name for this field. So we are calling this field role. And because this is a multiple choice question, we need to assign a value for each choice. And the specific value would be where the, the email address, where the notifications will be sent. So for volunteer, I have it as volunteer at email.com. For participant, participant at email.com. And for parent or guardian, parent at email.com. 
So we need another field that would um, hold the email address that we're sending the notifications to. So this would be a hidden email address field. And instead of making this field a variable, this field will be a calculated field. So if we hit options, again, under field properties, let's go to calculations and turn, make sure that this is a calculated field is turned on. And instead of a variable name, we will enter the variable name of our drop-down menu, and that will be our formula for the calculation. So right now it's just roll. And when we make a selection from this drop-down menu, the email address that we assign to each um, choice in this drop-down menu will get dropped into this hidden email address field. So for now, we'll keep this field visible so we can see how it works in the live form. But before that, let's go to our notifications page to see how that's set up. So when we scroll to your notifications, the email responses to would have the alias of our hidden calculated field. So going back to the builder, the alias of this field is TFA underscore, underscore 71. And this is the alias that we want to drop into that email responses to field. And make sure that it's wrapped in double percent signs. Another way that you can grab this alias is if you click on this tiny F icon here and you click on fields and you select the fields that you want to use, it'll automatically drop in that alias for you. So when you view the live form, I make a selection from the drop down, And if I do volunteer, volunteer email gets dropped into this field. If participants so participant at email.com and parent or guardian would be parent at email.com. When I submit this form, whatever email address that we have here is where a notification will get sent to. The third feature is the Salesforce checkbox. So you can use FormAssembly's pre-fill connector to pre-check a checkbox in your form based on a Salesforce checkbox. And at the same time, you can also use FormAssembly's submit connector to send data from lists, radio buttons, drop-down menus, and again, checkboxes to a Salesforce checkbox. So a Salesforce checkbox field is a field that can only be checked or unchecked. And later on in FormAssembly's pre-fill connector, we will see the option of choosing checked or unchecked when mapping um, a Salesforce checkbox field. So here in our form, we have a FormAssembly checkbox, hobbies or interests, uh, that has five checkbox options. So FormAssembly's checkbox question can have multiple options, whereas the Salesforce checkbox can only have one. Um, so one thing to remember that in using both the submit and pre-fill connectors, if you are connecting a form assembly checkbox field to a Salesforce checkbox field, you will need to individually map this specific checkbox question five times because we have five options. Um, and, the, and this will be mapped to a unique Salesforce checkbox field. Um, and I also have a drop down menu and a radio button here. Um, and whenever we make a selection, um, this will also send over data to a Salesforce checkbox. And then we can pre fill it back into this form, specifically um, in this Salesforce, um, sorry, in this form assembly checkbox question. Okay, let us jump to our pre fill connector and see how that's configured. So I've connected to my Salesforce environment and I am doing a contact um, lookup using an email address. So here we have the form assembly fields and on the right side, uh, we have the Salesforce fields. So for example, this first mapping, this is our form assembly checkbox question and it will be getting its value from the Salesforce checkbox field called reading. Because this is a checkbox field, uh, we do have the option to select if we want it checked or unchecked. Of course, if it's checked in Salesforce, we also want the form assembly checkbox option to be checked. So we select checked for reading. 
All the other options here will be mapped separately, so we're just leaving this as is. We're just leaving it blank. So moving on to the Arts and Crafts Salesforce checkbox field. Again, we are mapping that form assembly checkbox question to the Salesforce Arts and Crafts checkbox field. And we want it to be checked if the checkbox in Salesforce is checked. And same goes for photography, cooking, and music. So let's see how that works. So I am just going to query Salesforce using an email field. And right now, um, the checkboxes in Salesforce that are checked are reading and arts and crafts. So if I want to change the options that are currently checked, I will select photography and music and I submit this form. When I access the form again with the same link, photography and music should be now checked, not reading and arts and crafts. So here we see it. Um, let's also take a look at our Salesforce submit connector to see how we are mapping that. So earlier I mentioned that we have a checkbox question, a drop-down menu, and a radio button question. So in the Salesforce submit connector, I have all those options mapped individually. So here on the left side, we're seeing the Salesforce fields and we are getting the value from the form assembly fields here on the right. So this reading Salesforce checkbox will get its value from our checkbox question in the form. And if it's checked in form assembly, we want to send it as um, a value or we want to check that checkbox in Salesforce as well. So because these are individual Salesforce checkboxes, when we map them to the form assembly checkbox question, we are only sending over reading. So this could be one or zero, one being checked, zero being unchecked, or true or false. So true will be checked, false will be unchecked. I just personally um, use one or zero for, for Salesforce checkboxes. Again, similar to the pre-fill connector because we are only sending reading to its own Salesforce checkbox, then reading will, the only, will be the only option um, with a one value. And then we hop over to Arts and Crafts and it'll be the same. We're sending one for Arts and Crafts, so if it's checked in the form, we want to also check that Salesforce checkbox. And then this second group of options, this will be our drop-down menu. So same format. This would be, um, sorry, this would be the Salesforce checkbox field. And that second group would be our drop-down menu in the form. So it'd be the same setup. Um, if we're mapping to the reading checkbox in Salesforce, we're sending reading as one. So if it's checked in the form, it'll be checked in Salesforce. And then the third group here would be our radio button option in the form. Again, if we're sending, if we if we're checking the the reading option in our form assembly checkbox, uh, sorry, radio button question, then we also want the reading Salesforce checkbox to be checked. Um, and reading is one. Uh, we always map it individually. Um, so arts and crafts is one, and the rest is blank. So if I visit the same link. Um, I uncheck the checkbox since we will be try um, these other multiple choice options. So if I just want to do cooking, I remember earlier photography and music are checked. If I send this and go back to the form, music should now be checked. Oh, sorry, cooking rather should now be checked. And if I uncheck that and select again arts and crafts for the radio button question. I submit that, the data gets sent to Salesforce, we go back to the form, arts and crafts is checked. So just one last example for the form assembly checkbox. 
we are sending over reading and music. Originally, we had Arts and Crafts checked in Salesforce, but now we're sending reading and music. We hit submit. Again, the data gets sent to Salesforce. We visit the form again and reading and music are now checked. So thank you. I hope you learned about these three uncommon form assembly features and I give them a try. Um, if you are interested in a trial, if you need to sign up for an account, feel free to do so via www.formassembly.com/sign-up. Thanks again. Thank you.